the Ten Commandments for storing gold and silver. These Ten Commandments are from my experience on storing gold and silver valuables and I hope that these help you to consider your options and your strategy when you are considering storing your valuables. Number one, store at home. Store at home because that is a place where you have control of your valuables. Some people choose to store their goods at a safety deposit box at a bank. Some of them use uh, bullion depositories. Some even use other places off to their property to store their goods. Now, I don't recommend this because access is a very important thing access and the cost of storage. Now, if you have your goods stored at a bullion vault where you're paying a monthly or yearly fee, you may have some fine print rules and stipulations that will prevent you from accessing your goods when you need them. And your fees and your other disclosures may be something along the lines of a privacy concern that you don't want to have to deal with. Number two, a survey. Survey your property to consider the best places that you may use to store your goods. This is very important and time consuming because you have to think like a criminal and the more you think like a crook, the better off you'll be in this situation. Where would a home invader look first to find valuables? That is a place where you're not going to want to keep yours. I'll get into a little bit more about how you can use that reverse psychology and human engineering to consider a better place to put uh, a fake set of goods so that any home invader gets turned away. Know who to trust. This means that you must have at least one person that is preferably blood relation to you that knows where your goods are stored or how to get them. Why? Well, because anybody out there can get hit by a bus, can fall on hard times, uh, be sent to prison, etc., etc., a car accident. So you have to have somebody that can give you an out and can redeem your valuables in case you are not able to or simply not around. Don't advertise. Now, this is something that I haven't listened to very well over the years. Don't advertise your goods on YouTube. Don't advertise them on the internet. Don't tell your workmates. Don't tell your friends at the local pub. This will lead you to heartbreak eventually as uh, someone will hear about your gold and silver stash and eventually someone that you don't know uh, will want to access them. So don't do what I do in this situation. Don't talk about your goods. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. This may be one of the most important of the Ten Commandments for storing gold and silver. You want to have more than one location for a different variety of gold and silver valuables you have. Maybe you even have diamonds and other things. Bonds, uh, petty cash, whatever. You might have a gold and silver bullion. You might have numismatics. You might have many things that uh, you want to keep long term some of it short term, some of it old, some of it new. And you want to make sure that the stuff that you want to flip or the bullion that you have is in a location that's easier to access and your long term holds such as numismatic slab coins, etc. That, that's something you're going to want to have a different location. And so have two or three different locations. Me personally, I'm a little bit different than most of you because I live abroad. I have uh, gold and silver in three different countries and uh, that, that will suit me well, I believe. I don't recommend that for everyone though. Number six, alarms, safes, and pets. Alarms are very important, not just for your gold and silver and other valuables, but home invasion. And when you have a, an alarm coupled with a safe or two and a good watchdog, that is a very valuable strategy to protect you against being robbed. I believe those three things is almost foolproof in protecting you from being uh, the victim of stolen goods. So 
consider all three and there's even more than that that uh, I don't have time to cover here. Number seven, create a honeypot. This is a very important uh, commandment. You may be in a situation where you're not 100% confident on the security of your home and property. In cases like this, you might want to create a honeypot or a fake safe or a petty safe that you don't mind if an invader steals and you can recover from. This might be something that's in your closet, in your sock drawer, someplace that is somewhat accessible that has uh, only a couple hundred dollars in value and would satisfy the petty criminal. So creating a honeypot or two is a very smart thing. Climate control, something that a lot of people don't think about. Now, as we know, uh, silver is very uh, conductive of electricity, yes, but also it corrodes easy, especially if you get uh, Canadian Perth Mint products, the 49's fine. In China here, uh, they have a lot of silver that's 49's fine and 59's fine. And gold, the new standard here in Asia, is four nines fine and five nines fine. Now that's great for investing, and that creates a high quality product that looks great. But to store it, that's the difficult thing because um, it doesn't do you much good to store your goods and think very uh, detailed about it. If when you get your goods out in the years to come, it's not in the quality that you stored it with. Now this coin here is double sealed, has an airtight. It has a plastic vacuum pack seal from the mint. Other coins like your common Morgans that you stack. I know a lot of you stackers have a lot of these Morgans and uh, Peace Dollars and things like that. It's not quite as important to think of climate control and protecting those because they're already uh, showing wear and that adds to really the uh, uh, attractiveness of the coin. Uh, Canadian coins, be very careful. Those will get milk spots, scratch easy because they're a, a higher quality silver. Even gold, uh, if you have gold coins, um, they become brown and spotted if the conditions are not right. And then you have to worry about cleaning your gold and silver, which is another expense and headache that you don't need. So keep the temperature pretty much consistent. Uh, watch out for moisture, which is why most dealers that I come into contact with in Asia, they use this gel silica and they put a bunch of these into the containers with the gold and silver that they're going to sell and they put it in airtights and airtight boxes. And this helps to combat moisture, which is an enemy of uh, precious metals and, and other goods. And uh, that, that is something I highly recommend. Get a handful of those, put them in your containers and you won't have any problems as they consume the excess moisture. Inventory. Now, this is very important because uh, a lot of you don't really know how much you have as far as the quantity and the types of gold and silver that you have. I'm guilty of this too. Some of the product you have, whether it's slab coins or whether it's uh, bars uh, such as uh, slab bars with serial numbers and COAs, you're going to want to find a way to get an inventory of that in case it is stolen or in case of the of a of time where you want to find a buyer without having to go dig up your gold and silver so basically what i do is you can put these numbers in an email send them to yourself to your own address and you have them electronically stored you can also do this uh, by zipping up uh, the data into an excel spreadsheet or just carry them on your usb stick just random serial numbers is not something that people are going to understand or realize perhaps that that is gold and silver valuables that you have stored at home. So keep a good inventory uh, with the serials, COAs if you can get them because those will be very valuable when we come to uh, talking about here the tenth commandment of storing gold and silver, disaster recovery. Now the inventory is important because in disaster recovery you want to have something that you can go to the authorities with that will say, okay, I was robbed. Here's the serial numbers from the mint of the items that I have purchased. You may even have a receipt for some of them. This is important because those items can be tracked. And everyone knows that um, if you've got a PAMP Swiss bar and it's out of the packaging 
without the serial numbers, the value of that bar goes down. So uh, burglars are going to want to keep it as pristine as possible and get the highest value from your uh, COAs or your um, slab coins. And, and this will help you track the good. So um, these 10 commandments are not the be all and end all of storing gold and silver. Some of you may disagree with this. Some of you may have some better commandments to add. And I would appreciate it if you shared those with us. And hopefully this helps you to better understand uh, how you can store your gold and silver goods at home, on your property, indoors, outdoors, doesn't matter. Uh, you need a strategy.